Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with Mr. Snyder at Carroll High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And today, we are going to discuss uh, surveys, samples, and populations. Uh, your learning targets are to discuss what a survey and some limits of them. We'll talk about how populations and samples affect research, do some definitions there, and talk about why researchers cannot generalize their results. So the survey method, survey, you've all taken surveys before. It's a series of questions that people are asked to answer about a particular subject. And it's a good way to get a lot of information from a lot of people fairly quickly. Um, psychologists fill out, ask people to fill out questionnaires or by interviewing people orally. They're all surveys. Uh, but they may not be completely accurate. Their accuracy only goes so far because people may not be honest about their attitudes or behavior, they may limit their responses for privacy reasons, or they may say what they think the interviewers want to hear. For example, there was a survey once where they asked people how many times a day they brush their teeth, and everybody answered three. Yeah, three times a day. I do it three times a day, three times a day, three times a day. But if everybody did it as much as they said they did it, there would have been twice as much toothpaste sold in the United States as there currently was. So. At that point, we know that the people are not being honest. They're just adhering to the social norm of brushing their teeth three times per day. Populations and samples. Well, our, we need to do some definitions here. Our target population, think of the general population as everybody that lives in the United States. Our target population is the entire group they want to study or describe. So if we're doing an experiment in high schools, our target population would be high school students, okay? Hundreds of thousands of people in the United States are high school students. The target population is very large. It's only the people relevant to the survey. So middle school students would not be a member of the high school student population. We cannot interview hundreds of thousands of people. So a sample is only part of the target population. It's a smaller part. And there are some ways in order to make sure that the sample looks like the target population. How do we select our samples? We want it to accurately represent the populations that they're supposed to represent, um, gender-wise, race-wise, socioeconomic status-wise. Um, we could do a random sample in which individuals are selected by chance from the target population. We could do a stratified sample, which means that subgroups are represented proportionally. So if 48% of high school students are male, then 48% of our uh, sample should be male. If 30% uh, are freshmen, then 30% should be freshmen in our sample. If 10% are black, then 10% of our sample should be black. And we need to make it look exactly like uh, the target population it's supposed to represent. If we have a large enough sample size, let's say we're doing um, 50,000 students, it's more likely to be accurately stratified just even if we don't take steps to ensure that it is. So a large sample size means that it will be stratified, but it does not guarantee that it represents a target population. Why can't we generalize results? Because Sometimes researchers don't use a sample that represents an entire population. It's very hard to do a study where our target, our sample looks like our entire target population. Uh, we cannot, we may neglect a group. We may not, we may only be able to do it in one part of the country. Take one high school, for example. If we do the study at one high school, then we have to only generalize to other high schools that are like that high school. We cannot learn about the attitudes and behaviors of American in general, of Americans in general, because we usually have to limit our observations to only men or only women or people who live in one part of the country. A survey at Carroll High School would look very different from a survey at, say, Northrop High School or Southside High School or Homestead. Homestead High School or Norwell, all these high schools are very different and so we can't generalize from one to the next. And lastly, volunteer bias occurs on part of the respondents when conducting surveys. Bias, we all know, is a predisposition to a certain point of view 
And volunteer bias is people who volunteer to participate in studies may have something about them that makes them different from people who do not volunteer. So you know the polls on like ESPN.com and CNN.com and other websites like that, and it always says this is not a scientific poll. That's because only people, the only people who are responding are the ones that choose to respond. And the ones that choose to respond may not have the same attitudes as you or I. People with volunteer bias, volunteers are more willing to disclose personal information. They may have more spare time to participate and have different outlooks on jobs and money. Uh, volunteers probably do not represent the entire target population, so it's tough to take surveys and generalize them as well. And that is all for today. Make sure you fill out your learning targets, and I'll see you back here in class. Bye-bye.